Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. As always, I'm your host, The Spicer, and today's special report is brought to you by Canadian Gundam, your one-stop shop for all your Gunpla and Plamo needs in North America. Canadian Gundam is kind enough to provide a promotional code, Gunpla Network, for 10% off, so when you're at checkout, don't forget to use it. Now, this special report's a little different because we're not actually talking about Gunpla. We're talking about the new Mobile Suit Gundam Survival Game 2. This is the new arcade game coming out in Japan that has the actual cockpit unit itself. So for us here in North America, we'll be lucky to see it in an arcade, but more likely we'll see it at the larger conventions, and we'll have to pay a premium to play it as normally in Japan. I think the current game is around like eight to ten dollars, so like eight hundred to a thousand yen somewhere in there. It's so pretty expensive per game, but not terrible. But what we're gonna do, and turn the audio off on the video because we want to try to avoid copyright claim, but I want to play the video for you and point out some interesting things I saw along the way. You can find this over on Bandai Namco's Japanese YouTube account, so searching it's a little difficult. Uh, we'll try to put a link in the description below to make it a little easier for everybody. But let's go ahead and get started. So as we start, we see the pods themselves. It looks like it's going to be 2v2. Um, pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. Now, if you've ever been to a Japanese arcade, I've not personally, but I've seen things and I've talked to people who have, there is a much bigger culture around having like a game card or something that saves your data so you can come back and play these games since they're not going to exist in a console format. So the little pilot terminal let me back this up here here in the center is probably going to be that and we'll see a little later there's some customization so you'll probably be able to save that to the card keep it in that terminal and just use it whenever you go to the arcade if you're using it at a con you're probably not going to get that whole customization option thing so unfortunately sad for us but if you live in japan or you take a trip that uh, you have enough time to go back a couple of times you'll have at least something to save some of that information on now as we go through here we get to see a little bit of how the control panel is set up nothing too crazy pretty similar to the stuff i've seen before it's actually a little more simplistic looking but you've got two handles that look like they're kind of big joysticks that are attached to another joystick You've got like a select button, I'm guessing, some volume here, and then foot pedals on the ground. We'll get better visuals of those, but overall, it does look pretty cool. It isn't a pod this time, but it is going to be pretty big. You've got lights all over the place, and this having kind of a triple screen setup is pretty interesting. It's, I wouldn't say unheard of, and I think like something like VR would probably be a little more immersive, but I do like this concept instead of like big, one big kind of curved screen, kind of like the old ones were, kind of multiple panel curved screens. I like these flat panels. I do think they look a little bit better. Um, but in terms of the HUD, it looks like we've got your players here, and it does look like maybe you're going to have more than uh, two players on each side, possibly. It's kind of hard to tell. We don't really have a lot of information on this, but that's generally the feeling I'm getting. You're going to work off a point system, so something similar to the Gundam Versus games maybe, or something similar to kind of like how Gundam Battle Operation 2 works. You have your mini-map. I'm guessing down here is going to be something else. I'm not really sure what. Maybe um, like you get to pick an operator or a support person that pops up there with messages. you got warning panels down here. There's a lot going on, and as we kind of let this go into its title, we see Mobile Suit Gundam Survival Game 2, and then it just basically talks about the one-year war. That's the era it's taking place in. I'm going to be interested to see if maybe they expand the roster a little bit to match what like Gundam Battle Operation 2 has, because they kind of started around that same era and then expand it up into like Zeta, I believe, at least into double eight, uh, 0083. Now you do get a cool launch sequence here. You do have a lot of different options from the one-year war. It looks like you're going to get GMs, Gundams, Zakus, 
Sharzaku, Zagax. Um, so you, you've got a couple of options. It would be cool to see an expansion of that though. Um, you've got GM ground types. Once again, these screens look really nice. I, I can't say it enough, they look really good. You do kind of have this, it's, I wouldn't say, it is first person, it's just kind of a weird view. Um, I don't think it's terrible, but it is a little different. Uh, I wouldn't say it's disorienting, but yeah, you see you here, there's speakers in the chair, you've got some triggers here, and then there's a button, a red button on top of this. So you do have some pretty cool controls. It'll show us the feet pedals at some point, I think. It is, we see a bad place to stop that, but you do have, um, maybe it's two other like, um, computer generated allies or something it's hard to tell if that's players or not it would be cool to have more players in here i think that's a big benefit but overall you've got your armor you've got boost you've got some indicators here like your beam rifle charge um i think that's probably okay so that's the health and the cost of your allies do so you have an idea of what your score is going to be if one of them dies looks like if you've got another ally in a close proximity like here they'll pop up with kind of their health and everything a little easier to see it's that it tries to keep you engaged with stuff like that um, is especially in terms of like Gundam versus people will overcost and not even realize it just because they weren't paying attention to their health or their partner's health you get the feet pedals down here it'll probably just be boost Maybe a walking gimmick, but I feel like that's probably too hard for like an arcade game with no other controls than that. So I'm guessing that's just a boost thing. Maybe boost left, right, something like that. Now this is a little more interesting. This I wasn't expecting to see. It does look like, not only does it show you kind of movements and everything, but it cordons off the map. And it kind of gives you an idea of where you can drop to be a little more strategic with things. I'm not sure if maybe that's due to like any other influence or kind of how that works instead of having maybe a designated spawn point which maybe is this or maybe this is the objective you're going after it does show you kind of where the enemy is so if you need to drop a little bit further back to kind of counter them here or if you want to drop further back and flank them you can do that it looks like and then you have different squads so once again I'm not really sure if they're just going to have huge setups and all of these are players or if just the yellow are players and then there's like squad mates for them that are computers which would be cool I think that's a really interesting way to help fill that out but it does add a whole nother layer if you do have that ability to spawn in in different areas and have multiple roles and have that communication it would be cool to see something like this come to like PSVR or something but I super doubt something like that happens we did get Gundam Battle Operation 2, and I think that's the closest we're going to get. And that actually reminds me a lot of this. You do have, looks like, the ability to switch weapons and some parts, maybe. That's kind of cool. You do have some variation. It looks like it's pretty standard Federation stuff. GM, GM ground type, uh, gun cannon, and the Gundam. It doesn't look like there's going to be any long range, like, GM cannon work or anything. But it does look cool that you've got that customization and with that whole ability to save that data to like a player's card or something that adds an extra level to it now this was kind of what got me thinking about the whole str strategic spawn point as you select it looks like maybe you have an option to select some presets but then you get to drop and it lets you pick here between the different areas so if you look at that map and you kind of focus on it it gives you an idea of where you can put some flanking maneuvers in and just generally be more strategic with your uh, overall play style, especially for people who are going to play this a lot in the arcades. Now, as you saw here, we do have a lot of customization, and it looks more like it is all pretty much just color and weapon swaps, as we saw the Gundam here having multiple melee attacks, and then your 110 millimeter machine gun, your hyper bazooka, your sniper beam rifle, and then the beam spray gun. Cool that you can change those things out. And then you can change the color of the GM, which is kind of neat. I assume you can do that for all the other units. There are some more elaborate things in there, which is cool. 
You have your shields, which is be interesting to see for units that don't have a shield if that plays into it, like the gun tank here wouldn't have a shield. So I think that would be pretty cool. And overall, just visually speaking, this looks really nice. I, I can't, as much as I like Gundam Battle Operation and being able to see your actual mobile suit, this looks super fun. I really wish we would get something like this here in the States, but just the arcade culture doesn't really exist. You get a lot of action. You did see an underwater scene there, but no space, which makes me think maybe they'll expand it at some point. Maybe they won't, maybe they will. But it looks like it's more kind of all urban areas, nothing more. Not that that's super disappointing. I still think this is a really cool idea. And the Gundam kind of pod game is a really unique thing that really is... I'm just happy it survived, honestly. With the Japanese arcade culture being significantly different than the States, I'm glad that it found a place to kind of thrive at least enough to make a sequel to it and it just bums me out that I'll maybe maybe get like once in a lifetime chance to see it but we'll probably never see it here in the states so a little bit of a bummer but if you ever get the chance to go to Japan I definitely recommend checking this out be mindful it's going to be expensive it's a big elaborate setup so keep that in mind you're probably looking once again 8 to 10 if not more per game but Overall, if you happen to live in Japan or you visit regularly, let us know in the comments down below how excited you are and what you think are going to be the big differences between the first game and this game. I've seen some footage of the first game. I tried to pull a little bit here and there, but overall, it's just cool. It looks like just so good. The three screens look really HD, which is a little bit of a nice change. I feel like, of course, all the footage you see from the arcades of the older machines are like cell phone footage so they're not gonna be great but these looked really good and if you ever get to play it come back and find this video and let us know in the comments down below what it's like anyway this has been a gumplin network news special report i have been the spicer and as always good friends keep on building